So this video is going to be about USB from the perspective of a software developer and what they need to actually get started developing software. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some information and then show it uh, an example of how to actually use it. And in this one, we're going to be a little light and we're just going to talk through the USB, why it's named, what it is. So USB stands for Universal Serial Bus and the universal part is because USB is a plug and play device. And plug and play is an industry standard to describe when you plug a USB device in, your computer will automatically recognize this. And your computer will automatically recognize this through a mechanism of sending a class description to the computer. This class description is a long list of all the things that your USB device can do and how to actually talk to it. And the class part is down to USB having a whole list of protocols to choose from. So when you're working with USB, you have to tell, you have to create a list of all the things your USB can do based on a specific class. So it can be video, audio, printers, you know, a flash drive, a storage. And in each one of these, there'll be a list of settings you can set that will tell the computer how to use your device. So in Windows, there can be generic drivers that can work for many different devices without you even having to write drivers. And in the off case that your device is not listed in one of these, there are offshoots down here for you to basically go off the standard for your specific use case. But it will still be plug and play because you'll have to make a driver and what you'll do is you'll tell it once you plug in your device, load this driver. So now the serial part of USB. USB has four wires, a red and a black, which are the power, uh, it's a five volt system. And then we have this white and green, which are the data. Now, USB is a differential signal. So what that means is these two pairs are used together to create one signal and they're sent in a serial manner. So the datas are all going out in one order. So since there is only two wires and they have to both be used to create one bit at a time, data cannot be sent or, and received at the same time. So you're either sending data or you're receiving data in. All right, so the bus. Now bus is uh, kind of a generic term now. So I'm gonna, re I'm gonna refer to the network type of bus and a bus in network terminologies was this idea of having one long cable say ethernet and everyone jacked into a similar ethernet connection so when you sent a message out everyone received the message and it was up to the sender to determine whether or not this was a good but if this was a bite for them or not this also meant because everyone was talking on the same wire that only one person could talk at a time because if two people were talking at the same time at the exact same time data would clash and this is similar to how usb works but usb has this added concept of a host and device a usb bus has one host and multiple devices so the host is usually your computer or laptop and your device is usually a uh, camera, flash drive, or any device you're plugging into your computer over USB. And just like what we were describing before was, is you will send a message down to say this device down here and it will propagate to all these devices down here until it reaches here. And at this point, once the receiver if once the proper device received its message, at that point it can send a message back to the host. Now, because this device, because of the way USB is set up and because there's so many devices to talk to, USB has 
a few different ways of messages to actually use. So there are four types of transfers in USB. There are the controls, which is a small bits of data primarily used at the start of the USB connection. There's interrupt, which is not like a normal interrupt where you as the device would just toggle a flag or something. The way interrupts work on USB is you have to set a polling rate and the USB will keep polling the device until it needs to send stuff. The next one is isochronous or ISO and this is for scenarios where you need uh, guaranteed bandwidth periodically. So for example, a camera constantly needs to be sending out frames. So it needs, it needs to send this data out at a consistent rate at a, consent, at, at a consistent interval. And the distinction though here is that this is data is only going out. It's never, there's no checks. There's no guarantee that the, uh, the end user actually got the information. Unlike the bulk, where you are sending out data and it's getting verified and it's getting checked, but it's not guaranteed. So, so the distinction here is if you need a guaranteed bandwidth, no matter what, versus a guaranteed delivery, which is valid that the end user properly got the information. So with that, we're going to look at some data. So I'm just going to do a quick demonstration on how you can see um, communication on USB and the USB descriptors. So I'm just going to open up my terminal right over here, do an LS USB to see what devices we have. So right here is this keyboard I want to look at. It's on bus one and it's got an ID of 16. So if we do pseudo Wireshark, I've got a video describing this in more detail, I'll link below, um, on how to get the communication. And so we want to connect to number one. And what we see beginning is this is the initial USB connection. And this larger packet is the description, the class description. And if we go down, we can see it's an HID device, which is a human interface device. And if we go down, we can see it's a keyboard. And I'll describe this in uh, further detail in a later video. But from here, we can see that the source is talking to the destination, which is the uh, keyboard, and the keyboard response. And we can see that cascading like host device device to host kind of thing we're talking about where the the host has to initiate the conversation um, we can see other things if we go hit this USB button right here we can see that this is a control message and if I was to type we would see this interrupt message because this is the keyboard talking back uh, interrupt here cool and yeah we'll get into more detail on about the rest of the properties of this in a later video but it's just gonna take a little bit more time 